bully. And I always get a kick out of it, you know, when, you know, the politicians are, you know, or people on Wall Street or on television, and they say, yeah, well, the dollar is going to go decline, but it's okay because it's going to be orderly. Like, you know, you go into your account, you know, you know, yeah, you're going broke, but don't worry, it's happening very orderly. You know? I mean, what difference does it make if you're going to lose your money, right? I mean, you're just going to go broke slowly over time. I, you know. But the thing is, I think the reason that the decline is kind of slow is because a lot of people really um, you know, don't understand it or aren't acting on it, or maybe people have hope that the dollar will turn around. But at some point, when enough people realize that the dollar is going to go down orderly, they're not going to want to sit in for the ride. Right? If you're somebody in Europe and your advisor says, look, yeah, you've got a, a million dollars in dollars, it's okay because it's just going to gradually lose value over time. You know, what are you going to do? Okay, let me, you know, I'm going to leave my money in dollars? No, let me get out now. If the dollar is going to decline orderly, let me get out. Why write it down? After all, there's no interest. We're not paying anybody any interest on these dollars. They have nothing to offset the decline. So the minute more and more people realize that the dollar is going to have an orderly decline, it's not going to have an orderly decline because everybody's going to try to get out. Who's going to want in? Who's going to want to buy? You know, the only real buyers are going to be the Federal Reserve. But the Federal Reserve can't, they can't buy dollars. They can buy treasuries by printing dollars. But what are they going to buy dollars with? They don't have anything. I mean, we, they, they don't have any, any euros. They don't have any yen. I mean, our whole, all of our foreign reserves in total are about $50 billion. I mean, and that's nothing. Tiny little countries. I was just in Poland. I think they have more foreign reserves than that. You know, we, we're, we're nowhere. We can't defend our currency for an afternoon if people start selling it. And, and that's the crisis that's going to happen. The dollar is going to fall precipitously. And then what does that do to Americans? I mean, that means that Americans can't afford to, to buy anything. We can't afford to buy imported products. We can't afford to buy our own products. Because the people that are making products in America, they can export them. If the dollar falls by 50%, you know, and you're a farmer and you're in, and you're in Iowa, all of a sudden your European customers can pay twice as much. So where are you going to sell your products? Ship them over to Europe. If an American wants them, well, you're going to have to pay me as much as I can get in Europe or, or, or Asia. So a weak dollar, I mean, people act like if the dollar goes down, if you're not a tourist, that you're not affected. Of course you're affected. Because that's all you have if you're an American. Unless, I mean, unless you're you know, working with me, I mean, your savings are in dollars. Certainly if you have a job, you're getting paid dollars. People act as if the value of the dollar means nothing. That's, you know. It, that that means it means everything. That's what determines your standard of living. That, that determines what you can buy with your paycheck. That's what determines whether or not you can retire. It's not how many dollars you have. It's what you can buy. And the problem is, we're not going to be able to buy very much based on how many dollars they're going to have to print. Because remember, as this uh, financial crisis continues to evolve, right, the government is going to continue to pursue the same policies, the same policies of throwing gasoline on a fire. They, they're acting as if the markets cause these problems, and therefore the government has to solve them. They think the problems, they look back at the way things were a few years ago, and they think that's, that's normal. Like uh, President Obama in his most recent speech said that the economy was getting back to normal, and so everything was okay. But the problem is what he thinks is normal is not okay. What he thinks is normal is the problem. It's the reason we're in so much trouble. He said things are normal now because Americans are going out and buying more stuff. They're buying more cars you know, because government is giving them the money and supplying them with the credit. Right? So we're buying more stuff. We're going deeper into debt. The government is getting bigger. The government is expanding. The deficits are growing. This is all getting back to normal. This is the problem. This is not, you know... What, unfortunately, what we have to do in this country is we have to do the opposite, right? We're in a gigantic ditch right now that we got into by spending borrowed money and by consuming things we didn't produce. And the government thinks that the way out of this ditch is to dig it even deeper. If we could just go deeper into debt. Right? Barack Obama said that you know, credit, credit is the lifeblood of the economy. We just need to restore the flow of credit. Well, where, where does, first of all, where does he think credit comes from? It doesn't just come out of the thin air. In order for someone to borrow money, somebody else has to save that money. The credit comes from savings. Well, the savings are gone. 
So if the savings are gone, there's no more credit. And the problem is, the credit that he's referring to, consumer credit, that isn't the lifeblood of the economy. It's a cancer of the economy. People are not supposed to be borrowing money to buy stuff. And in fact, if it wasn't for government subsidized lending and government guarantees, it would be very difficult for consumers to borrow money. Because who would want to lend it to them? It's too risky. When, you know, when people borrow money to buy stuff, they might not be able to pay you back because they spent the money. What credit is for is for businesses. It's for businesses to make investments in capital, in plant and equipment, so that they can be productive, so that they can produce a revenue stream to pay back the money. And so there's collateral for the loan. And in the process, they provide the economy with goods and services, and they provide employment. That's where we want credit to go. But if all the credit is diverted by government to consumers or spent by the government itself, then businesses have no credit. Businesses can't get loans. And one of the reasons that a lot of businesses are having trouble borrowing money today is because the credit is being diverted by government to other sources. Because remember, if the government guarantees, if you've got a government guarantee right now, right, if someone wants to buy a house, well, gee, you know, the government guarantees all the mortgages. So why not just lend money to someone to buy a house? After all, the government is guaranteeing.